Our good friend Ken Brown says you beat out 85% of the people when you show up. So give yourselves a hand tonight, you showed up. So one of the things I like about these events is that you always wind up meeting people that you didn't know before. You always wind up getting information that you didn't have before. And information puts us in a position to move forward and to win. How many investors do we have in the audience? Anybody? Investors? Inspiring investors? Okay. Real estate professionals? Okay, I think we've got a good mix of people today. And uh, actually we have a number of individuals because one of the things that is uh, very important in real estate is money. And so we actually have today two institutions that are represented, two banking institutions that uh, assure me they would be happy to lend you their money. <laughs> I don't know if you even need a credit check. You can probably get a loan before you leave tonight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, the first one I'm going to bring up is TCF Bank, and they provided donuts in the back. So let's give them a hand. and my colleague, Lorraine, um, who's the branch manager. And we're here to offer you a totally free business checking account. TCF, we're open seven days a week, and we're open late. Monday through Thursday, we're open from 9 to 7, um, Friday until 8, Saturday from 9 to 4, and Sunday from 11 to 3. And basically, TCF offering totally free business checking account that you don't need to maintain a balance in the account. Um, there aren't any fees. You have up to 200 checks that you can write a month, 200 checks that you can deposit a month. And if it exceeds either one, there will be a quarter charge per transaction. Otherwise, cash, um, ACH transactions, that's unlimited with this account. Also, with this account, we do offer you a Visa gift card, I mean, a Visa check card. For every dollar you spend as a credit, you earn a point. Those points can be redeemed for airlines or merchandise. Also, you do get free online banking with this account. And um, the other thing, basically, um, with this account, that really everything is free. There aren't any fees and there aren't any hidden fees. Do they forget anything, basically, with this nope. account? No. Uh, apart from the fact that we do have the free small business account, we have free small personal accounts that have some really unique features, too. And we have a, a unique account. We call it our Affinity Checking, which offers you a lot of freebies in it. It also offers you some um, discounts with consumer loans and um, other products that TCF offers. I don't know if um, Zabeda also mentioned, though, but with the uh, business accounts, we do have, being that she's our business banker, she can help you with merchant processing. She can help you with small business loans. and. Um, Zabeda is hooked up into the C program that helps small businesses start their, their loans and their businesses. So she has all the information that you need to uh, help you succeed with your business accounts. She also acts as your personal banker. Phone number's on here. If you call her, she will help you. Where is your branch? We are located pretty much all around the Detroit metropolitan area. We do not have a branch right down in the heart of Detroit, but we are on every location, like Roseville and Warren and Southfield and Lathrop Village and um, uh, pretty much all in the surrounding areas. Ann Arbor, uh, Livonia, Canton, Westland, Redford, you know, we've got about uh, 56 branches right now, and we're opening up three to four of them a year, so we're really expanding. We've started expanding down River Area, Allen Park, um, we have one at the Outer Drive that's a brand new one, Taylor, starting to move a little bit down further into the Monroe area, so we're expanding. Okay. One thing also that I forgot to mention, as of today, we don't do a credit check on this account and also that you are able to open up the account tonight with a minimum of $10. Um, as I mentioned to Derek, we told him $25, but we made an exception going um, down to $10 basically with this account. So anytime you have any questions, we're able to open up the accounts for you tonight. 
um, or if you would like to call me, my name and phone number is on the bottom of this card. I will be your personal business banker. At any time, if you have any questions, concerns, you would call me. Instead of going into a branch, calling the 1-800 number, you would know who the person that you're speaking with. Um, the other thing, we do have a VIP type of account that's attached with the business. It's called a personal payday, that you don't need any money down today to open up that account. Everything is free. You do earn interest on this account, and um, your checks are free. Uh, free checks online banking, free, free, free bill pay. Mm -hmm. Free checks? With the personal account. But with the business account, let's assume you want the most basic style checks. Um, let's assume they cost $15. I will credit you $10 of that cost, and you'll be basically paying the $5. For the first first box of checks. Right, exactly. Order. This yeah. is only an exception through me. If you go walk into a branch, you'll be liable to pay for the whole, you know, the whole amount of checks. Also, you're, you have to open up the account with $100 when you walk into a branch, where we're just making that exception as of tonight. Ten tonight. Ten tonight. We're doing ten tonight. Yeah. Because no, if it's an LLC you know, and you don't have it with you as of tonight, you just give me all the information. I can pull it out of the file. We do have an access to that. When if you're it's opening, an LLC. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. When you're opening up an account, if you are using your name, say Jane Smith Attorney or Jane Smith Realtor or whatever, you do not need DBA papers or uh, limited liability corporation papers. It's only if you've come, you've made an assumed name that you have to have papers to open up the account. But as long as you're using your personal name, you can open up that business account in your name without papers. And if but you don't a, have but your, not an LLC. If you're opening up an app in LLC, you, you obviously have articles of incorporation. You have to have those. But if there are some people that will open up a, a business account with just their name and they're using their social security number. If you're opening up a business account with articles of incorporation or a limited liability company, you usually have a tax ID number. Those papers, yeah, we do have to have those papers. Now, if you file with the state, if it's a corporation, and you don't have the papers on you right now, I can still open up the account and look up the papers for you. She can, uh, I have access to those. Okay. And yep. also, if you need to get an EIN number and you don't have one, I can also get you one tonight. Okay, great. Anyone yes. has any other questions? Thank you for listening to us. Thank we you appreciate so much. It. Thank you. Remember when it seemed like all of the banks were America, manufacturers, MBD, and so forth. The banking industry has changed so much. And we're finding now that a lot of the um, community banks and some of the banks we thought of as smaller banks have really become prominent. And I used to invest all of the college's money. And I found, for example, that uh, some of the banks that we didn't do business with some years ago were very competitive very competitive in the rates that they would offer and uh, you know you would just say well wow I wouldn't have thought that that bank could even get in the game but not only could they get in but they could offer competitive rates so we need to think outside of the box with our financing in general and the banks that we're dealing with in particular here you have free checking being offered with this next bank that I'm bringing up that I remember um, them being particularly competitive which surprised me and uh, Mark, uh, one of my associates, said when the young lady came in, well, they're a friendly bank. And this is Franklin Bank, and we're going to hear from Ms. Kentavia Copeland. Tell us about Franklin Bank. Uh, if you please bear with me if I go out. I have a bit of a cold today. Um, today I'm coming here from... speak from the microphone? Mike? Mike, can you not hear me? Mike's right there. I'm fine. Uh, today I'm representing Franklin Bank, just as Mark said. And as uh, Mark was saying, we are a very friendly bank. We like to say to ourselves, and other people have said it to us, so I, I have to believe it's true that if we can't do it, no lending institution can. Because not only being a bank, we have the opportunity and the ability to broker out loans that we can't do in-house. So we have access to over 2,000 different programs. So one is bound to fit your needs. 
Um, I find right now the biggest thing that's come across my desk that I see is really a great innovation is now we're able to do what's called uh, sub-subprime, which is where people have FICO scores below 500. So we actually have a lender who is willing to do those loans. Now, granted, those loans can only go up to 65% LTV, but when you're dealing with investors, I find that most of the times they do have that down payment money. So they are able to still purchase that home if need be. Uh, if you have any questions about the types of loan programs or if you have any questions about something that you've been looking into while you've been investing, I'd love to answer your questions. I'd like to do a dialogue rather than just spew out needless statistics at you. Any questions? How about on our Okay. That's period. When you're talking below 500, 65% LTV, period. And if I'm throwing out LTV, if I'm throwing out, throwing out mortgage jargon that you can't understand, LTV is loan to value. That's based on the value of the home. So if the home is worth $100,000, only 65% of that can be financed through the institution. Okay? What if someone has um, a person is out of bankruptcy about six months and they have like a 640 score? What is Typically, we like to see people out of bankruptcy for at least two years. Now, if there are extenuating circumstances where they may have reserves, now say for example, I have a client who went through a bankruptcy almost a year ago now, about 10 months ago, but the bankruptcy was attached to his business. So that's an extenuating circumstance that we can overlook. It wasn't exactly attached to his personal finance. He has reserves to back up his loan. So lenders are a little more lenient when they see that especially if you have six months worth of reserves. And when I say reserves, we're typically talking about mortgage payments. So if you have up to enough reserved in your personal bank account to pay six months of your mortgage payment in advance, and we can see that, then we can be a little bit more lenient. If you're giving the person equity, if you're giving them about 15% equity, okay. to help her out with the situation, would you still be receptive to that? If you're saying the person has 15%? I'm giving her 15 Okay. So she would only be financing 85% of the loan? Okay. If we can see that, and we call that gift funds. So if you're saying, if she says, for example, I have 15% gift funds to go towards the down payment, and she's out of bankruptcy for six months, you're saying, then that would be an extenuating circumstance that we could look at. And we could be a little bit more lenient. Yes? If someone with a score maybe like 580, uh, you're just doing, you have any special in-house programs for, well, does anyone have any questions? No. Oh, she uh, asked if a person has a score of 580, are there any in-house programs that we could do for them? We could do that in-house. What we would try to do, what I would try to do, because it's best for the customer, I try to get my customers to go FHA, unless they have really excellent scores. I'm talking 700 or above. And then we can go conforming. But when you're in the, say, 675 all the way down to 580 range, I try to get them to go FHA because that can keep your, your rates, your interest rates around 6%, 6 to 7%. But when you get into the 500s and you're trying to go FHA, that's when you have to have reserves. Any other questions? Now, you talk about somebody below 500, you still have uh, somebody that would be willing to do a loan even if it's at 65% of uh, LTV. Would it be an arm? Well, this is the thing. When you're dealing with lenders who are willing to take on that type of risk, it's not so much the loan program that you want to worry about, it's the interest rate. Right. So the rate would be higher. It would be a fixed loan, but the rate would be a lot higher. So whereas if you're looking at interest rates are around 6%, like I said right now, they've dropped a little bit, you might be at maybe 10%, maybe 11 because it's so risky because right. the, low, the, the score is so low. But you still could get a fixed rate. Now, when you're start, when you're talking about a loan at 65% then an interest rate at 11%, I would recommend you do a two-year arm, what we like to call a band-aid loan, to allow yourself some time to fix your credit to refinance into something better. Because even if you are at, let's say you're at 485 right now, in two years you could be at 640. I don't know what your circumstance is. Right. It's very possible. So we like to look at the 228 arm as a band-aid loan to allow yourself time to fix whatever the problem may be. Also, what we like to do, if you're getting ready to refinance to a 228 arm, try to pay off as much as you can. I find that I have to battle a lot with my clients about paying things off. Because even if there's something on your credit that's not a tribute to you. I have a client who has his identity stolen, and everything's showing up, collection's showing up, but it's report that just weren't his. And he just refused to pay those off because he'd been fighting with the Federal Bureau for about five years. And I had to explain to him, you need to pay this off because this is raising your interest rate and your interest rate is always going to be at 
because you keep allowing your score to be 602 because someone ruined your credit. Just pay it off. If it's possible to do so, just pay it off and allow your credit to stick in your head and allow your credit to rebound. Yes? I want to refile on home everyone. If you know someone who you know, they can get you know, they just want to pull the money out of the house before 30 days. You mean after purchasing it, purchasing it for 30 days? You can pull money out of your home anytime you want. This is the problem. If you pull money out of your home after purchasing it for less than a year, you can only borrow up to the purchase price of your home. So if you buy a home that was foreclosed on, for example, and it's, you bought it for $100,000, but it's worth $300,000, you can't take out $300,000 worth of that home. You can only take out $100,000 within that first year. When you get out of that first year, say three years down the line, then you can refinance for the whole $300,000. What's your turnaround time on your difficult uh, transaction? Describe difficult. What would be the difficulty? The one like the scenario I told you earlier, where it's just how bad it was. Well, this is the thing. What I would like to do, has it been discharged? Yes. Discharged is it. What typically what we would like to do is we'd like to do a credit bureau update. So that would allow her to have the things that are showing up on the bureau as being, um, it'll say, covered in bankruptcy, whatever. Is this a Chapter 7 or Chapter 13? 13? Okay. Chapter 13, I'll say covered in Chapter 13, bankruptcy, blah, 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 blah. Even though that's paid off, it still will affect your credit report negatively. And they never tell you that. Another thing that I want to let you all know is when you pay things off, if you pay off collections, make sure that you make a deal with them before you pay them off that says that they will take that off your credit report. Do not allow them to put on there, settle for less than, or pay collection, because that still affects your credit report negatively. Always make sure that they will take it off your credit report. So what we would do is we do, excuse me? But paid as agreed. You can do paid as agreed. I would rather, you, and you can fight them on this. Tell them, and what a good thing to do is call at the end of the month. Because at the end of the month, their managers are standing over them saying, look, we got these quotas to fill. They're giving out uh, raises for people who bring in more accounts. Call at the end of the month. That's when they will settle for a lot less. So if you have a $1,000 collection, you call them and say, look, I have $750 right now. I want this off my credit. But I want a letter stating that it's coming off my credit and it was paid. And they'll be more apt to do it. Don't call at the beginning of the month. Don't call at the middle of the month. Call at the end of the month. When their managers are standing over them saying, what's going on with this collection account? And they will be more apt to deal with you. Um, but back to your question. What I would do is, like I said, a credit bureau update. And we have access to that because we have direct access to the credit bureau. So I'd have those things taken off. And probably what we would like to do is give that time to show up. That usually takes about 30 days. So that will help break her credit score up a few points. It won't happen immediately, 50 point jump, but it will take her credit score up a few points. So probably with something that difficult, I'd say two months. Uh, two questions. Do you do 100% financing or do you do two or three K? We do, excuse me, do, we do do 100% financing, but like I said, you're getting into the excellent credit range. 100% uh, financing has become a lot more risky for lenders. And if you pay attention to the news, you see a lot more lenders going out of business, especially a lot of subprime lenders who are doing a lot of 100% stated income loans, which are very, very risky. So when you're getting into 100% financing, they want to see a higher score and they want to see full dollars. Because they... What do you consider excellent credit? A good score? Uh, a good score, quote unquote, good score, would be somewhere in the 600 to 675 range. An average score would be somewhere between 575 to about 620. That would be a good good score. Excellent is 700 or above. Um, and then your second question was 203K. We do do that. I actually have a realtor I'm working with right now, an appraiser I'm working with right now, who only do 203K. So that is something that we're able to do. So yes. you're saying a score between 575 and 620 can do 100% finance. Is that what you said? No. <laughs> so, I can see that a good score. <laughs> I was with you on that. You were with me on that? <laughs> now, when you're talking 100% financing, it's a lot different when you're talking refinance and when you're talking purchasing, especially if it's a first time home buyer. I don't know too many lenders who are offering 100% for a first time home buyer anymore. 
because it's just so risky. We don't know what you're going to do with that home. Now, when you're talking refinance 100%, then they're a little more lenient because you've had this home for a while. We can see your mortgage history. So it's a lot easier to go to 100% if need be. But still, a lot of lenders aren't willing to go to 100% anymore. 95 is a lot easier. You can go 97 with FHA if you don't want to take any cash out. So. You can go 97 with FHA? Yes, 97%. So you said you're going to state anymore? I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm not saying that. We do still do state it. For example, um, a colleague of mine had a client who owns his own business. And so it's very hard to state his income because he doesn't take a personal salary. He just draws off whatever income he gets from the business. So it's a lot easier to state his income. However, that does have to be backed up with tax returns from the business. So we can still do state deals. It just depends on what's best for the client. Did you guys have I have cards over here with my flyers, if anyone would like to grab them. Um, I'd like to invite everyone out. We're having a pre-qualification home buying seminar uh, next week, Saturday from 11 to 3. You can drop in at any time. We're giving free credit reports and credit analysis. So if you're looking to purchase a new home for yourself or investment or you're looking to refinance, I would encourage you to come out. Uh, credit reports are costing $30 online. We're giving them to you free and telling you what you need to do to fix your credit if that's a problem. We're telling you what you could be pre-approved for on that day, or if we can't get you in a home, what's it going to take to get you into a home and how long it's going to take. Yes. So uh, do you, <clears throat> for low-income and first-time home buyers, do you also uh, work with other programs like uh, the counties, uh, uh, Addy, and, and Mr. for low interest? Uh, we do work with those. I myself personally haven't had those come across my desk before. I have had HUD homes come across my desk before. That's we do true. work with those. And uh, those are a little bit more difficult, <coughs> only because you have to have a lot more things expect inspected. Um, for example, you have to keep the money for repairs in escrow, and those have to be completed before that yeah, money can be paid to the contractor. But we do do those. Did that answer your question? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Do you have programs for your first-time home buyers? Yes, we do. We do have programs for first-time home buyers. First-time home buyers typically you can go to 90%, 95, depending on the credit score. Yes. I have two questions. The first is the credit report. Is that all three reports, or is it just one? It's all three. Okay. The second question is there's, there's an auction that I'm interested in going to on the 16th. Okay. If I qualified for, for whatever amount of money I qualified for the 12, how soon would those funds be available? Well, those funds would be available as soon as you find the home that you want to purchase. If but, we if we qualified you on Saturday and said, okay, you can buy $120,000 worth of home, that's what you start looking for. What about the paperwork? The auction. The paperwork from the auction, we are not in control of that. As soon as the paperwork with the bank. Oh. Well, as soon as I get your credit report, I know what you're qualified for. It usually takes about three weeks for me to close a loan if there's no problem. Okay. So <laughs> as soon as you can get me the documents I need, we can get your loan closed. Typically, I like to send out a package and have it overnighted to the client and then see that package come back as soon as possible. I like to get things in processing as soon as possible because I like to lock my clients into a rate. So if I quote you a 6.5% interest rate, I need you to get that package back to me as soon as possible so that we can keep that rate. Yes. Okay, also, if you're in one of those bad credit situations, you know, and you do get the loan even if it's a 65 LTV, okay. does it have to be a principal res residence or can it be for an investment? Now, I'm not quite sure if there's a, a limit on whether it can be a primary or investing investment property. I just had the, uh, the notification come across my desk that we would be able to do those a couple of days ago. We haven't had any clients that needed that particular uh, resource yet, but I'm under the impression that you could do both. But like I said, the best thing to do would be come out on, on on May 12th and find out. Well, if you can't make it, we'll work. <laughs> um, well, if you can't make it that day, from 11 to 3, no, not at all? Okay. Then I, what I would do is just give me a call. 
just give me a call. And I can take a look at your credit and see what you need to qualify for. Just take the card and give me a call. Where is the My office is in Southfield. If you want the address, I'll give you a minute. It's 21415. It's on the flyer. It's on the flyer. Oh, that's where you are? Yes. <coughs> Any more questions? Question. Yes. <laughs> on your 203K? Yes. Is that only for owner occupied or the investor also? We can do investment properties also. Okay. So that's back. They had suspended that. I didn't know they had the message. They brought it back. Um, from my understanding, they brought it back. And from my understanding, it's the same as the primary residence, but I'm not quite sure. We did have a few FHA guidelines change. For example, we are now able to do a little bit lower scores for FHA that I had to turn away just a And so I'm able to bring those clients back. So if you have a property with deferred maintenance, maybe 20% of deferred maintenance, you want to do a full Okay. I wanted to give everybody some credit tips to try to repair some credit real quick. If you could write this down. The key number here is three. Okay? Three. All right? There's different types of credit. Okay? When your credit score is calculated, the bureaus are looking at three different things. They're looking at the diversity in the credit, 50% available on your credit cards. That's not true. You need about 30% or less. Available credit really does count towards your score because it shows that you are able to have that credit and not go crazy with it and use it all up. If you're maxing out your credit cards all the time, that's hurting you, okay? So always be aware of that. Also, another key number, other key numbers you need to know for your mortgage are one, two, three, and four. One month late, well, when you have a one on your credit report showing up on your mortgage, that's a 30 day late. That's going to hurt you. Two is a 60 day late, three is 90, and four is when you've entered into foreclosure. Okay? So always be aware of that. Also, there's a thing called rolling ones, or rolling 20s, or rolling threes. That's when you're consistently late, be it 30 days, 60 days, or even 90 days on a mortgage. Now, interestingly enough, you can have a rolling one for, let's say, five months. And that is not as hurtful to your credit as having two, two different 30-day lates in different months. So say you're late in March, you catch up in April, and then you're late again in May. That will hurt you more than being consistently one month late all the way from March to April. Okay? We can count a rolling one as one 30-day late. However, if you have a break in between those 30 month, that, that 30 day late and have another 30-day late, we have to count that as two and that will really knock down how much loan to value you can borrow. Okay? Everybody get that? All right.